Uh, importantly, uh, this will we'll be reiterating some things we discussed at the presentation in June, but importantly, the trust is a combination of two things. It is a fund. It is a fund intended to um, provide support, financial support for a project in this community. And we define community to be uh, everything within the zip code 30021. So the city of Clarkston plus the area around the city of Clarkston. Bless you. Um, in addition to it being a fund, it is also a process. It is a consensus-based participatory process. It is an exercise in what we refer to as direct democracy. Uh, in, around the world, there are over a thousand cities that are uh, doing programs referred to as participatory budgeting. Uh, in the United States, New York City and Chicago both have forms of participatory budgeting. Around the world, again, there are over a thousand doing it. In participatory budgeting, the city is setting aside part of its operating fund uh, for community residents to decide what they will be doing with that fund, with that amount of money. The thing about the participatory budgeting process is city government owns the process, if you will. They control the process. It is government money that's being set aside for individuals to decide what they would want to do with the, that fund. But it is a model. It is a growing model. Uh, around the world, so we borrowed a bit from that. We also know that around the world there are a variety of communities uh, that, are, that use consensus-based process and use direct democracy uh, in making decisions. Historically here in this country, town halls uh, were used in New England. They were a process, they were a direct, democ direct democracy process that have been utilized and there remain some towns that do that. Uh, Quakers, for instance, still use consensus-based uh, decision-making in all of their processes uh, uh, in, in um, um, whatever they may be doing. So we have a broad and long history internationally for direct democracy and participatory process. What we hope is to build on that here in Clarkston and modify the concept a bit. And the way we've modified the concept, first and foremost, is we've told, uh, I've talked to some folks with the city, say, we don't want your money. That money needs to be used for infrastructure and police and fire, roads, lights, the things that we expect city government to be providing. So in tight times, the money should be applied as it is. We hope that this complements whatever is going on in the city and, and with their budget. So the idea is that this is an independent fund. It can be how, we, how do we fund the fund? individual donations. Folks can go on our website, cdfaction.org, and they can donate. Individuals receive the benefit of our tax system that says that you get a, a deduction for that kind of donation to a 501c3. So in this community, you can donate to a fund that will be utilized for the benefit of, the, of this entire community uh, individually and re reap the benefit. But in addition to that, unlike most nonprofits uh, around the world, you get to decide what you do with the money together with residents of the community uh, and, and decide how you're, gonna, how you're gonna use those funds. That is not something typical for nonprofits. We can shop how we fund nonprofits. I like environmental issues, so I will give money for environmental causes. I like certain other things. But once we've provided that money, generally we don't have much of an opportunity to decide how those funds are used in any particular case. Not so with the community trust you are able to donate to the fund, and then working with community residents, decide how that fund is to be utilized. So we think you get two benefits of that. Our tax system, the benefit we have from those kinds of donations, and this direct democracy approach where you get to decide what to do with that fund. Uh, so that right now is how we're funding this. We've had generous donors who have, who have provided funds uh, to that, and we appreciate that, and we hope that'll grow. The idea ultimately is this will be sustainable over time. And we can talk later about what that means and what that might look like. So on August 15th, we have a fund. It is over $50,000, 50, just under $50,200 at the moment. That money will be applied to a project. On August 15th, we're going to do a couple things uh, leading to funding of a particular project. We're going to identify a theme that evening. And what I mean by theme is a general area that, that we may need to address. That might be health care, that might be education, that might be safety, that might be housing, that might be economic development. But the point is, the residents will determine, they'll prioritize through a process, a theme for this coming year. 
They'll select. We're going to work on, for instance, health care. We are also going to identify trustees. Trustees are folks who live in the community, work in the community, or own a business in a community, and are at least 16, are at least 16 years of age. Okay? So if they fall into one of those three categories and are at least 16 years of age, they can be a trustee, which means that non-residents can be trustees. But importantly, only residents get to decide who can be a trustee. Okay? So on August 15th, the only folks making a decision are residents of 30021. And the decisions they're going to make are what theme are we going to work on this year? And who are the trustees that are going to be responsible for ultimately uh, allocating funds for a project that we decide? So those are the two main things we're going to do on August 15th. If there is time remaining during that period, we will then begin to brainstorm ideas. So if we decide, for instance, health is our area of, of concern or our theme for this year, we'll begin to brainstorm ideas in healthcare, project ideas. What can we do in the next year with this fund to address a concern regarding health care? So we'll begin to brainstorm those projects. That'll be August 15th. Determine a theme, identify, nominate trustees, and then ultimately maybe begin to identify projects. Now importantly, how do we identify trustees? Uh, the room, as many people participate, will be divided into groups of 10, small groups, uh, to have deliberation and discussion so that we can work towards a theme. And in, in those small groups, we'll identify two, two individuals, one who is at the table with us and one who may not be at the table. Remember, if you're not a resident, you're not allowed in the room. But, we've, unless you volunteered one way or another, and there's some way folks can do that. But there may be folks that work for agencies. There may be doctors in the community that don't live in the community, but work in the community. And if we pick health care, maybe they would be good trustees. They work in the community. They have some good ideas, potentially. So maybe they can be trustees. So each table, each group of 10, will decide, will identify two individuals. One must be a resident, because we're saying pick somebody in your group, identify someone in your group. And you may also identify somebody who is not at the table, who's not in the group. Somebody you trust, somebody with a certain expertise or experience that may need to be part of the conversation as a trustee. Importantly, trustees do not make decisions about the ultimate project. They do not get to decide the ultimate project. They do not get to decide the theme. The only things they're responsible for doing are, A, we'll talk about the next step process that they'll host and facilitate, uh, in helping us narrow down to a set of projects that then get presented back to the community. And B, once the community has determined a project, their role is simply to allocate funds in accordance with the wishes of the community. We want to do Project X. Trustees, we want you to make sure that you're funding the project that we've just determined we want to fund. And the trustees will be responsible for doing that. They'll have a term, and their term will be limited by the project. Once they've completed the project and have funded, uh, allocated the fund for the project, they're done. They will then uh, report back to the community, hey, you've asked us to do this, and we've done this. That's their role. Uh, so that really is how trustees will work. Now, I mentioned August 15th meeting. Then we will have a series of next step meetings, September, October, November, where we, in those meetings, that's where we'll generate project ideas. We'll do a lot of brainstorming about, well, we've chosen health care. What are some projects we could do with the fund that we have to address health care concerns in this community? So we'll be generating ideas. Residents and non-residents will be invited to that. This is just a brainstorm. The trustees will be there. They will be, help facilitate those meetings. They'll host those meetings. And ultimately, what they're going to do is they're going to take the broad range, the entire spectrum of project ideas, and narrow those down to hopefully a handful of ideas, four to six, based on certain criteria that come out of participatory budgeting processes around the world. Mainly, is the project equitable? Does it benefit the entire community without excluding any portion of the community? So is it inclusive? Is it equitable? Is it fair? Does it benefit the entire community really is what we're asking. Is it feasible? A NASA Space Center can't be built with $50,000. 
So maybe that's not a project we choose. Uh, is it feasible? Do we have the funds uh, available to do the projects we're considering? And do we have the time to do the project we're considering? So is it feasible? Is it equitable? And the other thing, is it needed? Is someone else in the community already providing or meeting that need or providing a certain service or uh, resource to meet a certain need? Do we really need an additional project or this project? So that'll be part of the consideration too. So need, equity, and feasibility. There may be other criteria that the trustees determine as well. And, but again, their role in those next step meetings will be simply to identify a handful of projects and then in December or January of December of this year, January of next year, we'll have a community celebration where the trustees will come back and propose their, the ideas that they think are appropriate based on equity, equity, feasibility, and need to the community. And the community will once again engage in identifying and prioritizing a project, actually select the project, at which point the trustees will be asked to simply, hey, here's the project we've selected. We need you to come up with a plan for funding this particular project. So again, the trustees have not decided the project. They, they are a working committee that's working on which projects are, are possible and needed and then presented back to the community for the community residents to determine. So again, from August through December, that'll be when the work is done. The initial meeting, August 5th, we're picking a theme, picking trustees, and we're gonna spend some time picking some projects, identifying projects, for the community ultimately to decide which project they would like to fund. And then we hope to fund that project. 